attorney says we can't start yet because it's yeah. seven o'clock. <laughs> we always blame the town attorney. <laughs> Herndon Town Council Public Hearing, September 26, 2017. Good evening, everyone. We'll call our meeting to order. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I, first I need to, I'm so sorry, I need to um, announce that we have some Boy Scouts here to um, help lead the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Boy Scout Troop number 786 um, uh, is led by Scout Leader Mike Maggio. Did I say that correctly? Maggio, thank you. We're so glad that you're here. Come on down to up front and we'll follow your lead. Thank you for being here this evening. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, the of the United States, States of America and to the and Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Davidson is not feeling well this evening, so he will not be with, with us tonight. Um, we do have um, a couple, actually three sets of minutes up for approval. Um, and I will ask for a separate motion for each one. Is there a motion to approve the September 5th work session minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the September 12th public hearing minutes? So moved. I'll second that. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. And finally, is there a motion to approve the September 19th work session minutes? So moved. Second. All those, our discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, we have um, a presentation this evening. It is um, our pleasure to proclaim, um, to recognize Herndon Arts Week uh, here, coming up soon here in October. And I'll recognize Council Member Signe Friedrichs to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A Town of Herndon proclamation recognizing Herndon Arts Week, October 9th through October 15th. Each year, Herndon Arts Week, uh, Week affirms the town's commitment to the arts community in Herndon and recognizes that the performing arts, visual arts, literature, and the humanities are pivotal to the enrichment of human expression. Herndon Arts Week, an initiative of Arts Herndon, was started to promote our many wonderful arts organizations and businesses in the town. Arts Herndon and similar community arts organizations including Art Space Herndon, Classical Ballet Theater, Reston Herndon Folk Club, Washington West Film Festival, Next Stop Theater Company, The Music Loft, Sundance Performance Company, Monroe Street Studios and Potter's Fire provide creative outlets for our citizens to enhance their town by developing and promoting the talents of local artists. Designating an annual Arts Week in Herndon provides a focal point to celebrate the unity created by our town's diverse cultural heritage through the arts and demonstrates the vitality of our community of artists across all fields. Herndon Arts Week brings, brings together public and private sectors to reaffirm support of the arts and humanities and to emphasize the significance of arts in our community. Therefore, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon hereby proclaim October 9th through October 15th, 2017 as Herndon Arts Week in the town of Herndon. Recognize this important week in our community and commend and support Arts Herndon, the town's official arts agency, along with Artspace Herndon, Classical Ballet Theater, Reston Herndon Folk Club, Washington West Film Festival, Next Stop Theater Company, Music Loft, Sundance Performance Company, Monroe Street Studios, and Potter's Fire for their roles in organizing and hosting Herndon Arts Week. Further, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon hereby encourage all citizens to participate in the activities that are occurring throughout Herndon Arts Week, including free activities for children at Frying Pan Farm Park on October 9th, folk club concert at Amphora Diner on October 10th, jazz at the Herndon Senior Center on October 11th, arts crawl in downtown Herndon and at Art Space on October 12th, and Arthur Mike Maggio at Art Space on October 13th. Expressions Portrait Competition Exhibit Reception at Art Space on October 14th. And a concert featuring Chris Matthews at Art Space on October 15th. And to participate in the arts events and activities throughout the year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion on the presentation? 
Ms. Friedrichs. Well, I have to admit, I have a soft spot in my heart for um, the arts community. Um, many of whom I see here tonight, I see in our audience um, board members from um, Arts Herndon. There's Mike O'Reilly, there's Peggy O'Reilly, um, Pat McIntyre, there's Mike Lloyd, and Beth Meyer. And if there are others, I, I don't see them. <laughs> but I also see Mike Maggio and um, Michelle Koros from Sundance Theater. So um, I'd like to take a moment to say how proud and um, thrilled I am that you all are here in the town doing what you do best, which is making this a great place to live. The arts is uh, an important part of placemaking, and we have a very cohesive town full of volunteers and staff who really want to make this a great place to be and to live and you all have done an amazing job so um, I'd like to also recognize that um, almost all of Herndon's arts organizations were founded about 30 years ago by the same group of people some of whom are in this room today um, Pat McIntyre but there's also Richard Downer, Melody Fetsky, Les Seidel, um, Ann Rust, Robin Carroll and I know Marcia Hobson, Grace Cunningham, Sheila Olam, and a number of other of you have played pivotal roles in starting and supporting these organizations, and you've made this town a better place, and I thank you for it. Thank you. Um, other comments from council? Um, Mr. McKenna, followed by Ms. Wool. Is everybody? Yeah. Okay. I, I think this is a wonderful thing. I uh, grew up. I, I've said this a couple of times, but I grew up in a town smaller than Herndon. It's a mile square of endless possibilities. Um, and in that time, when I was in high school, I had 61 kids in my graduating class. It was a public high school, but so we had to play sports. But I also was in the choir. Um, when I was, the reason why I joined the choir originally was because I wanted to go skiing. And I'd been skiing before, so it was a way for me to go skiing for free. And I ended up liking it a lot. Uh, you know, Puccini and other things. And we had an amazing uh, choral instructor. And I remember my senior year, our center for our high school team, football team, was an amazing uh, player, but he was also an amazing uh, actor, and he, he bet me to go on the school plays. Like, I bet you won't go out for the school. Like, we had a little bet, and I ended up getting the lead. It was in uh, the, uh, Damn Yankees, which was, uh, you know, it was probably funny because it was the first time I ever been on stage. I didn't, you know, like blocking. I'm used to blocking something else because you hit somebody, but blocking is actually how you present yourself on stage. So, in any event, I just think, the moral of this is that a person like me uh, who wouldn't have been normally exposed to something like that, having arts in the community is very important because I think it makes you a well-rounded person. It helps you understand other things, and it gives you, um, uh, a, a, you know, reason to understand what things are going, you know, how things are going, and gives you perspective on things you wouldn't have seen before. So um, I'm grateful for what you're doing in town here uh, because I'm grateful for what uh, the, the arts did for me in my life. So thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you. I would applaud the arts groups in Herndon and our surrounding communities as your commissioner on the Virginia Commission for the Arts. Herndon has always been a high point, um, a, a point of illumination, um, and a wonderful community that is supportive of all the arts. And there is an art for somebody, for everybody. It might be uh, 2D, 3D, performing, slam poetry, graffiti, outdoor painting, culinary arts. But trust me, there is an art form for you in our little town. So if you haven't taken advantage of the wonderful array, the diversity of offerings, the um, fresh innovation, innovation of some of our artists, I invite you to enjoy our Arts Week. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Olam. Thank you. Yes, Arts Week coming up is always a really fun time in Herndon because we have so many activities going on. So I hope that you will take advantage. You can check out their website and everything should be listed there. And I know as a former trauma minor in college, I've just really enjoyed the arts. Um, I'm a gardener. That's my art. Uh, my brother is a real artist that paints and is an architect, but it really does bring a lot to, to the community. And one of the biggest things we did as the Council for the Arts, now Arts Herndon, was when we did the mural on the veterinarian hospital. I mean, the community came out like crazy to get their pets on there. I have mine on there. Me too. The mayor has hers on there. <laughs> and uh, 
there are always people going there that have come to Herndon and heard, heard about it. So that really does bring a lot of traffic to our community and then we have several others. So the arts do make it a really wonderful place to be and congratulations to Arts Herndon and all the other arts groups that are here tonight. Thanks. Thank you. And Vice Mayor. Yeah. I will just add to that and say, um, I'm sorry to say I will be, I will miss part of Arts Week because I have to be out of town for a work event, my, what I call my day job. But um, <laughs> there is some amazing events happening that week. And I remember it's just, it, it's that reminder, like Signe said, about um, just placemaking, right? That there's always something going on. And we do have a really diverse group of arts organizations in Herndon to take advantage of. And particularly want to mention um, our two co-directors of Arts Herndon, Jason DeMambro and Anna Schoenfield, who really have helped kind of coordinate and spearhead and, and collaborate with all our arts groups and help to make that week a really cohesive, interesting, dynamic uh, set of events for everyone. So thank you for that. Thank you. Well, the arts really are the heart of uh, so many things that happen um, in our town and especially in our downtown. Um, uh, almost two years ago now, we designated a portion um, encompassing our downtown as an arts district in the town. And with our downtown redevelopment project, I think this will just be more and more of a draw for people to come. We learned 20 two or three years ago with Friday Night Live, if we have something, you know, arts related, music related, something fun that you can bring your, your family to, the people will come. And so we've tried to build on that over the years and um, there are so many groups here tonight. Uh, there are, I hear from artists all the time on Twitter and Facebook that I didn't even know were in the town who don't necessarily have a studio but who live here and want to get more involved. So it's a very exciting time. Third Thursday this year was an addition that I think really brought attention to our arts community and um, people have told me that you know, they didn't even know it was going on but they're driving th or walking through town and there's something happening on the town green and they stop and check it out to see what's going on so I, I really do believe and I, I think my colleagues uh, agree that the arts can be an economic development driver for the town it's going to bring people here to visit our galleries see our theater perform and spend their money while they're here at our restaurants and and establishments so I think that um, it's an exciting time for Herndon we're glad that we have so many arts groups here this evening I'm, everybody's um, almost everybody I'm impressed I have a <laughs> list and they didn't have a list and you've <laughs> got almost everybody that I had but um, I do want to invite for uh, for the presentation um, all of the town council and our manager um, and attorney and we have representatives from Arts Herndon who've been mentioned, Mike O'Reilly, um, Anna and Jason, Michael Lloyd I believe is here who's the board treasurer, uh, see Pat McIntyre, thanks for coming and crossing the border from Reston to come over for Arts Week in Herndon. Um, I'm not sure that everyone is here that's on my list, but we um, have uh, listed uh, Dawn um, Hapton-Stahl from Monroe Street Studios. If you haven't checked them out, there you are. She's behind the pole. She's, she found the secret. Um, <laughs> if you haven't been to Monroe Street Studio, you should really check it out. There are all kinds of arts and um, even some, some uh, 3D printing going on over there. My kids did a camp there a couple years ago where you could play Minecraft and then come and build your Minecraft world and 3D print it. It was I didn't really know what that meant, but they did, and they had a, b a blast. <laughs> um, Laura Redioff uh, was going to try to make it by. She's the executive, um, uh, the CEO of the Music Loft, and we just rented a viola from them, so they've got lessons and something for everybody there. Uh, Michelle Coros, who I think is uh, here from Sundance Performance Company. Mark Maxey is chairman of the board of the Washington West Film Festival. Um, his studio is right here in Herndon, and the Washington West Film Festival happens over at Reston Town Center every year. And anyone else that is here from any of the arts groups or any artists or people on the board that I have missed, please uh, come forward to the presentation.
Hi. So, okay. Sure. No problem. No problem. Yep. <laughs> so hi, I'm Dawn Haptonstall. Um, I'm representing Monroe Street Studio. Um, owner is Yana. Farmer and her husband ran Farmer Runs 3D Herndon. So it's kind of the part of the Monroe Street Studios. And I wanted to let you know that we are having at least one event um, also during um, Arts Week. We're having um, on October the 13th, Friday the 13th, we're having henna. <laughs> we're having Ooh. henna. So, and it's, it's available for adults and teens to come and participate. If you haven't come to Monroe Street Studio, I welcome you to come. Stop by, see what it is that we do there. We're not always there in the studio. Sometimes people are teaching there. Sometimes I'm just there part time. Um, but if you're interested, please come by. We'd be happy to give you a tour and show you what it is that we do. So thank you very much. Thanks for being here. I'll be brief. Mike O'Reilly uh, here as the president <laughs> of Arts Herndon. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you all on the announcement that uh, you've reached an agreement with Comstock and it's going to be publicized and there'll be a public hearing on October 24. We look forward to the downtown development. We look forward to the town constructing an arts center, which we've been talking about doing for some 30 years. Uh, five mayors haven't been able to get the job done, but this mayor and this group on town council are moving forward farther than anyone else has. So my heartfelt congratulations uh, really to each of you for that. Um, I, I just on behalf of Arts Earned and the arts organizations, I wanna thank you all for the support that you give all of our local arts groups. We really couldn't do it without you and without the support that we get, that we get from you. We hope to see you during Arts Weeks and I'd like Anna to come up and talk a little bit about that. Hi, um, Sydney kind of said it all, but I just wanted to re reiterate that we have a whole week of fun coming up. Um, October 9th, we have Kids Day at our um, wonderful partner, Frying Pan Farm Park. Um, we'll be having Fuzzy Tales, Drum Daniel, and Line Dancing for kids available that day, so that should be a lot of fun for them. Um, it's open to all age groups, and that's a day that school is not in session, so it's something to bring kids to on that day. Um, on October 10th, the Full Club of Reston Herndon is hosting us at Amphora Diner. Um, October 11th, Tim McKee is going to be actually performing cabaret concert at the Herndon Senior Center um, in the afternoon. Um, the Arts Crawl will be on October 12th, which is Thursday, and we'll partner with all of our local partners as usual, which includes Monroe Street Studios, Next Stop Theater, all the local businesses in town. Um, on Friday, October 13th, we have Mike uh, Maggio is going to come and do a reading and a signing of his book, The Appointment, and he is a wonderful local poet and author. And then um, on the 9th, or the 14th, I'm sorry, is our ninth annual Expressions Portrait Competition um, at reception. So we have over 42 um, portraiture artists coming, and Ju local artist Judith Peck will be dis um, declaring the winners for that competition that night. And then on that Sunday, Chris Matthews will be playing in concert at Art Space, and she is just a wonderful local jewel. Hopefully you've all heard her play at the Arts Crawl and around town, so definitely want to just ask you to come out. And all of October, we have wonderful um, opportunities for the arts throughout the town. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings us uh, to our comments portion. Mr. Town Manager, do you have any comments for us? As a matter of fact, I do, Madam Mayor. Um, I was in receipt of an email from Greg Miller, who's the Director of Student Activities at Herndon High School. Came in late last week, and I quote, I just wanted to thank you for allowing us to host the Liberty District Golf Tournament at Herndon Centennial over the past two days. The hospitality that we received from you and your staff was top notch. The course was also in the best shape I've ever seen. Um, we are thankful for the long-lasting relationship we've had with the Herndon Centennial and hope to continue for many, many years to come. Please give our thanks to your entire staff as they were all amazing over the past couple of days. So that kudos to Gene and his Absolutely. crew for that. Um, I also want to take this uh, opportunity to congratulate Chief DeBoard, who last week was named the third vice president of the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police. Um, it's quite the honor, and again, Chief DeBoard being a, a leader um, among law enforcement professionals in this region. 
Um, also want to congratulate HPD because that also at that same convention, uh, they received the Virginia Law Enforcement Challenge Award for Excellence in Traffic Safety, another well-deserved uh, honor. And uh, again, it's a tribute to Chief DeBoard and her leadership and the fine staff she has down there. And finally, as Mike O'Reilly alluded to, we yesterday announced the comprehensive agreement uh, was posted to the website. Um, it is uh, the fruits of many, many months of very spirited, complex negotiations. Um, and I just want to remind everyone that we will be doing a briefing in this chambers on Thursday, October 12th to brief the public on the agreement and a public hearing for your consideration of that agreement has been scheduled for Tuesday, October 24th. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. McKenna. Uh, just a couple things. The, um, I, I got some uh, inquiries in regards to the Herndon Youth Council. We'll be sending out letters at the end of next month. Um, just We have made the selections. It's just uh, the process of, of getting everything done. Uh, so anyone listening, just know that that will be happening next month in October. Uh, and also want to congratulate the town of Vienna for their community center ribbon cutting. I was there with uh, Mr. Ashton on Saturday. Uh, it was good to see some friends that haven't seen in a while. And uh, also, it's kind of interesting, the WNO trail uh, buttresses up on their community center as well as ours. So uh, you can always uh, get your bike tuned up at the Green Lizard and uh, make the trip back and forth. Uh, there's a little plug for you there, Beth. So, but uh, <laughs> it was just great. And it was uh, just, it's great to see what they were doing with the space, including, you know, uh, in bed space. It was really good. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. Thank you. I just want to mention that um, a number of us will be attending the Dallas Regional Chamber's um, Hispanic Heritage Month Mixer this Thursday. So if you have not checked out your local chamber, um, please join us over at Frying Pan Farm Park Visitor Center Thursday evening. And um, I think Councilmember McKenna and I will be happy to and pleased to pronounce the Town of Hernan's proclamation for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, also to my Jewish friends, I wish you a blessed Yom Kippur this weekend. Thank you. Ms. Friedrichs. Um, on Sunday, I had uh, an obligation in the morning, and as I was coming back, I drove past Runnymede Park, and I don't think I've ever seen as many cars parked outside Runnymede Park, and I realized it was the um, Nature Fest. But it was, they had closed off an entire lane from one end of, Elden, of the um, Herndon Parkway to the other. It was amazing. So um, I wasn't able to attend because of my other obligation, but now I'm really, really jealous. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ms. Olam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, one of my favorite things that Herndon does is coming up. In another week, we're gonna have the big fall cleanup. So you can get your, uh, if you've got an old appliance you wanna get rid of, furniture, vehicle parts, plumbing, tires, only two per household, don't go crazy. Don't invite those resting people over to bring their tires. Uh, <laughs> and building materials, but if, still if you have hazardous type weight like old paint and oil and so forth, that still needs to go elsewhere. Uh, they don't take that at the curbside. So find your stuff, get it out there. And if you get it out a couple of days early, people drive around and pick it up so they'll recycle it for you. Um, the other thing that's uh, just happened today, I wanna congratulate my neighbors, the Smiths, that got their chicken coop approved, and now they are the proud owners of chickens in Herndon, helping make us a sustainable community. Thank you. Congratulations, Chris and Robin. Right. Thank you. Excellent. Um, I just want to say uh, congratulations to Aslan Brewery. Uh, so they've been a microbrewery in town for two years. As many of you know, they bought some property right in the heart of the downtown and just hosted an event um, a week and a half ago, um, and it was, they have a huge following, right, for a business that's been around for two years, and it was a really well-run, excellent event for having a place where you can drink beer for six hours straight. Uh, um, they did an excellent job, so I just wanted to commend them on that and really welcome them to uh, what they have coming up as they work on um, building a, a new space for the downtown. Um, also along those lines, so this Friday, we still have one more jam brew left. So if you need something to do this Friday night, um, there's jam brew, same place as where Friday Night Live is, right? F uh, essentially the same hours, 6.30 to 10. So please come to that. And then all day on Saturday, they do October Brew Fest. So from noon to 10 on Saturday, you can attend that. Again, always something to do in Herndon. Um, not to mention Next Stop Theater still has their play Disgraced. 
um, going on through this weekend. And Next Stop Theater is selling their costumes. Um, so this Saturday from 7 in the morning to 11 a.m., go to Art Space and um, get a bargain on a Halloween costume or some other costume party that you may be going to. They're selling all their old costumes. So I highly recommend checking that out. Thanks. Get there early because the vice mayor was going to probably I'm camp so out excited. starting right I'm after so Jamboree on Friday night. We're loading up. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it will be a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, nominations for the 2017 Good Neighbor Awards are due Friday, October 13th. Residents can nominate a family member, friend, or neighbor who enhances the quality of life in your neighborhood. And there's more information in the application available on the town website, which is herndon-va.gov. Um, I wanted to share that if you are not following um, uh, the Herndon Police Department on social media, you should be. They used uh, Twitter to get out fast alerts, like there was a traffic alert this afternoon that they put out there, and they are launching their Instagram account uh, starting on uh, October 2nd, and that is um, for a lot of reasons, but uh, largely to try and reach um, the, the younger uh, people in Herndon because Instagram is where we know the kids are posting all their pictures, so um, check them out on there. And I want to make sure that everyone is, uh, this weekend, most of the council will be attending um, the Virginia Municipal League Conference. It's being held in Williamsburg along with the town manager and the town attorney, um, and it goes through Tuesday, so our work session next week will take place on Wednesday, October 4th in the, in the uh, conference room rather than on Tuesday as usual so mark your calendars for Wednesday October 4th uh, the next portion of the agenda is reserved for comments from the audience this is the um, opportunity for you to come forward to speak to the council on any item that is not listed as a public hearing item this does include um, anything that's listed as a general item or on our consent agenda so um, if you want to say something about the state of the town report that we have not yet heard or um, anything on our consent agenda or anything else that's on your mind this is your opportunity to do so you have up to three minutes please state your name and address for the record and when the red light comes on please try to wrap up um, who would like to come forward and speak to the council this evening? No one? Go in once? Okay, thank you very much. Making sure I didn't miss anyone. Okay, we do have um, a couple of public hearings this evening. The first one is Ordinance 17019 to amend and reenact Chapter 74 Utilities to revise sewer and water availability fees. Um, I'll open the public hearing and recognize uh, Dana Singer for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, the ordinance that we've prepared for your consideration is to amend water and sewer avail availability fees. Uh, earlier this year, the council was briefed on the water and sewer system, including the results of uh, utility master plans that had been worked on the previous fall. Uh, I'll review again some of that information in the presentation because those master plans really do inform the rate analysis and establish the basis for the recommended rate adjustments. So to begin, I'd like to explain that availability fees are one-time charges paid by developers uh, to allow them to connect to the water and sewer system. Our rate adjustments are based on the philosophy that growth pays for growth. And availability fees are really trying to offset the large capital costs to establish the backbone of your water or sewer system. So large major pipelines, pumping stations, or treatment facilities are examples of those capital costs. In the town, we don't have our own treatment facilities. We are wholesale customers purchasing water from Fairfax Water and sending our sewer for treatment elsewhere. And when we talk about buying capacity from those large treatment facilities, that's a part of a capital cost that they've incurred that we are then buying a part of at, as a wholesale customer. And our availability fees were last revised in October of 2010. So the future water and sewer system needs uh, were really used to determine our availability fee adjustments. So those utility master plans that I spoke about uh, were uh, developed to project future growth, future needs, future demands on our water and sewer systems. They were completed in the fall by a specialized consultant, Whitman Record and Associates. And they use computer modeling and various systems to help us project and predict what future development might uh, need from our systems. We use growth data from the Department of Community Development um, to uh, 
enable the computer model to try to recreate the demands that we would expect, focusing mainly on the metro area and the downtown redevelopment area. Those really driving the needs for more capacity for our system. And we work that out until the year 2040. Um, again, those master plans are the planning documents that really uh, help us establish the need and timing for our improvements and form the basis for a capital improvement program, which again forms the foundation for rates and fees. So if we take a look at water first, um, those utility master plans identified a couple of large um, capital investments that we would need to make. And they're listed on the screen, the additional 1 million gallon uh, per day capacity purchase from Fairfax Water, uh, new connection to Fairfax Water uh, transmission mains. In the meantime, we'll be modifying our supply vaults in order to provide uh, the capacity that we need. But by 2025, we will need these additional transmission mains, as well as additional uh, storage uh, by the year 2025, and those are our estimated costs, and you'll see those in the town's capital improvement program. Now, on the sewer side of things, again, our large capital investments are an additional 1 million gallons per day capacity purchase that we would uh, need to make, and uh, we're evaluating our current, um, where we're going to buy that capacity from at this time. We're using the rather large figure of $22 million for uh, our capacity there, which is with Loudon Water. Uh, it appears that would be the way we would uh, add that capacity to our system at this time, so we're using that figure. Uh, Fairfax Water is unlikely to have the capacity available for us. Um, and then there are some uh, pipes that need to be increased in size in order to carry the development that we would expect in the metro and downtown areas. Uh, in order to develop our fees, we engaged a specialty firm of Municipal and Financial Services Group, and they helped us analyze uh, how to buy this capacity and what it would uh, impact our rates. Uh, I have Michael Maker here as well as Edward Donahue, and I'll turn the presentation over to Michael. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> so as you mentioned, my name is Michael Maker. I was the project manager for this study. Um, the availability fees that we calculated are based on industry uh, standard methodology from the, um, the main water industry, the American Water Association uh, trade group, and for wastewater is the Water Environment Federation. Uh, and the availability fees were developed to assign the cost of expansion to future customers, so they're not paid by existing customers, and um, and there shouldn't be any cost borne by these customers if they pay their fair share from new customers. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it, it ensures a growth pays for growth policy, and new customers are then served by the latest addition to the infrastructure to the utility. So the current availability fees for water are in the second column here and the proposed or recommended fees for water in the last column there. Uh, right now, you charge residential, commercial, and industrial customers by meter size. Um, your typical residential customer is going to be that 5, 8-inch um, meter size, and you can see larger customers pay a larger equivalent or portion there. Uh, for multifamily, they pay 80% of that 5, 8-inch um, equivalent dwelling, and that would be per dwelling unit. Our recommendations are to keep the same uh, structure for water, uh, but making sure they meet the, the uh, cost of expansion. On the sewer side, uh, things are not quite as clear-cut. Your current sewer availability fees are a little different. Uh, they're not just by meter size. Uh, it actually um, it varies by dwelling type. So residential is single family. It's by per dwelling. Um, your current fee, you can see there in the second column. For hotels, motels, and nursing homes, it's actually charged per master water meter. So if they have a large meter that serves the entire property, uh, they're charged that way. And then each unit uh, within that hotel or motel, they're charged an additional unit fee. Uh, all other residential units are, or uses are charged per dwelling unit, and all other non-residential uses are charged per what's called a DFU or a drainage fixture unit. So you actually go into the property, count all the fixture units, and charge them uh, accordingly. And there's a minimum charge of at least 20 DFUs. 
the proposed sewer availability fee. Uh, we're also recommending you use the structure that you're already using for water, and that's meter size. Uh, so again, by residential, commercial, industrial, vary this by meter size, and then for multifamily, charge that per dwelling unit. Um, so right now, your current drainage fixture unit for sewer, um, there's, a, there's a degree of um, you know, specificity there, but it's also administratively more of a burden. You have to go there anytime uh, the property changes the fixtures, adds or, or lowers the numbers of fixtures. So uh, going to this um, methodology will make it easier to administer and maintain. So then lastly here, we just have a comparison to some of the other surrounding utilities. Now every utility is different, and there's not going to be a clear apples to apples comparison. This just gives you kind of an idea of what of what other um, utilities in the area are charging for water and sewer availability fees. You can see the, um, towards the bottom, Herndon Current, is the darker red and darker grayish blue there, where your current fees are. And then you can see proposed, um, you'd be closer to the top of the surrounding utilities. Now this doesn't take into account any additional increases that they are proposing. Uh, this is only based on any readily available fees that we were able to find either by contact them or looking on their websites. Uh, so these adjusted fees attempt to ensure that the most appropriate user is contributing to the capital improvement costs required. In our case, this is projected development, and we are recommending these rate adjustments in order to have the developments that are driving the need for the system improvements and capacity purchases participate in these costs. We are available for questions. Okay, questions for staff. Uh, Mr. McKenna. Just for clarification for the people in the audience and watching at home, these availability fees are for new, uh, not for existing. Is that correct? Right, right. Yeah, so just so everyone knows, this is for new development. So don't, you know, if you're existing, it's you won't be having a heart attack. So that's, uh, that's what my question is. I think it's important to note that if you, if you don't raise these to the level of what it costs to, to pay for this growth, then you, current users would have to bear that cost. Thank you. Other questions for staff? We barraged you with questions last week. So, uh, Vice Mayor. Can you also comment again or just clarify for us? I know because now with the proposed, Herndon will be much higher up the stack in terms of uh, comparable jurisdictions. Um, but I know you've mentioned that's because maybe the other ones are soon going to have to be in the same position. Can you speak to that at all? Right. Since you're a, you're a retail provider from, the, from wholesale service, what you get from the county and then what you send either to Blue Plains or if you send it to Loudoun, um, it's really dependent on what their costs are. You don't have your own treatment plants, so it, it really depends on you know what it costs you to buy that additional capacity, that additional million gallons per day of capacity of growth. So um, there's not a lot of control there. There's only so many places you can get water from and where you can send your wastewater. Uh, a lot of other places in the surrounding area are under the same regulations from EPA and Chesapeake Bay, so they're also going to have to adhere to, to a lot of these rules and regulations. And so it, but I, my question is more, so we anticipate that many of these jurisdictions listed will also be facing a rise in their fees as well. Right. So where what I'm trying to clarify is where Herndon is now third down, uh, fourth down from the list, that within the next year, we anticipate many of these jurisdictions will be facing the same decisions, correct? Right. I can't say exactly when it's going to happen, but yes, you you are... Uh, getting ahead of things by, by getting on this now, getting the capacity at the lowest cost possible. If you mm -hmm. wait five to ten years, who knows if that capacity is even going to be there or what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone else is going to have to increase theirs as well. To catch up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for staff or for our consultant? So you may not have this answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, $22 million. That's a lot of money. Why is it so expensive? <laughs> Well, because that's just the cost of doing business yeah, or um, regulatory compliance, um, cleaning up the bay. Um, yeah, it, the regulations are not going to be decreasing anytime soon. They're making it more stringent when you have to uh, uh, to meet different compliance regulations. Um, Bob, your engineer, can certainly give you plenty <laughs> of reasons of, of what, sure. what that cost uh, equals, but. Uh, that's what they're looking at right now in, in terms of what you're, what you're going to pay for. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that slide just to say between Fairfax County and Loudoun Water, I think we're a difference of maybe $4 million in our – they would be $4 million cheaper at Fairfax uh, County. But Loudoun Water is a newer plant with newer technology meeting more up-to-date environmental standards, and they're 
um, to buy into their system is more expensive because of the for those reasons. And so why are we why do we need to buy from them instead of Fairfax County? Fairfax County likely will not have the capacity at this time to sell to us. Thank you. Other questions for staff or our consultant? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Boy Scouts are loving this. Water and sewer. So exciting. Um, okay, so there are no more questions for, um, for staff. Um, is there anything else you wanted to clarify for us before we open the public hearing? No. Nope. Okay. No, thank you. Well, this is a public hearing, so I'll call on comments from the audience. And uh, the rules are the same up to three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Um, is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak on this item? Okay, thank you. Um, then with that, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Madam Mayor. Mr. McKenna. Yeah, I want to thank staff and everyone that worked on this. Uh, uh, this is there is a, a motion? Oh, sorry, the I'll make a motion to the <laughs> for <laughs> um, ordinance 17-0-19 uh, um, to amend the uh, chapter 74 utilities. Sorry about that. That's okay. Second. All right, thank you. Uh, discussion on the motion, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, yeah. So, no problem. Uh, I, again, I apologize. Uh, I just want to thank staff uh, and everyone that worked on this. This is extremely important. Um, this is something I actually had to deal with about 18 years ago in my hometown when I was on council, um, but we are in a, a much dire situation. And I really applaud you for getting ahead of this because um, the unknown can cost you substantially versus what you know now. Um, environmental regulations have changed in the last 18 years um, and I know how much uh, waiting two years for us costs my hometown 13 million dollars in water capacity in a town of 2300 uh, houses that was about seven points on taxes um, because there wasn't any preparedness so thank you very much on this um, I'm definitely uh, on board with it I can see the projections so I really appreciate this and I'm definitely uh, very enthusiastic about this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Olam. Thank you. Um, this was the field my late husband was in. He was a uh, water quality expert, and most of his colleagues work at places like Blue Plains uh, water treatment plants. And I've also been a member of the Federal Water Quality Association and Water Environment Federation for over 20 some odd years. And our staff did an excellent job, as well as the individuals that came in to consult with us. If we want to develop along the toll road in the future where the metro is going to be, we have to do this. So since I have been on council seven years, we've been you know, working on this, moving forward. So this is just something we need to do. It's like every now and then uh, we'll be inconvenienced with putting in new pipes around town, water because after 50 years, you gotta do something. So we have an excellent staff. You're always on top of these things and I appreciate that. And it does lead, lead to a better quality of life. You hear about places all over the country where they have huge water main breaks and sinkholes develop and so forth. So thank you for all your work and making Herndon a wonderful place to live and not have a catastrophe at the last minute. And <laughs> now we can have some growth. Thank you. Thank you. Other uh, discussion on the motion? No. Um, water and sewer are the things that you just take for granted and you don't think about planning ahead for it. Um, I've learned a ton about how water and sewer work, so I thank DPW for schooling me on that. Um, it's a lot of money. It's the cost of doing business, and the, the risk that we have by not doing it now is that there may not be enough capacity to purchase going forward, and even if there is, it is likely to be more expensive. So. Um, the, the cost that we are passing on to the developers in these availability fees is the cost of buying the water. So we are not you know, making a profit or stowing it away. We're actually using it to purchase the water capacity. So um, that's enough about that. So thank you for your help and for helping us understand um, how all these things work because I know that I certainly didn't prior to sitting in this seat. So uh, with that, I'll call the question on the motion to approve made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Ms. Olam. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, and that motion carries. Um, next up is Ordinance 17020 to amend and reenact Chapter 42 Motor Vehicles and Traffic to add a new section 42 223 designated residential parking zones to designate the Old Drainsville Hunt Club Zone. 
Um, I'll open the public hearing on this ordinance. Um, there was a petition from the residents of Old Drainsville Hunt Club that was entered into the record, and I will call on the town manager for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> As you uh, mentioned earlier, yes, the the residents of Old Drainsville Hunt Club did petition the town to look at a situation that was occurring up in the neighborhood that was a result of Herndon High School being under construction, the limited parking that is a result of that, a trail that exists between Old Drainsville Hunt Club and the high school, and complaints that we've been getting both at, at the police and at the town manager's office regarding litter, illegal parking, increased speed along that road before and after school. Um, HPD was sent out there uh, to issue tickets and look for violations while we were waiting on getting this action before you. And in my personal observation of going out there and looking at it, uh, I determined there was a safety consideration on Huntsman Place. Uh, there are two curves in the road in which cars parked on both sides creates a, a, a situation where it would be very difficult to get emergency vehicles down the street. I'm not saying it would be impossible, but it certainly would slow down a response. So with all these things in mind, we went out and performed a staff study of the area. I want to take note of this map right here. The red area above, if the Herndon High School is up to the left outside of the view of this, uh, of this map, but the red area adjacent to it is the Fairfax County Kingstring neighborhood. On the right, you will see the no parking signs for a residential parking permit program that the county had already established in the Kingstream neighborhood for the hours of 8 to 3.30 on school days, um, unless you are a resident of that area and have a permit. Uh, you also note the yellow line that comes from Bennett Street down to Huntsman Place. That is the trail that, that goes between Old Drainsville Hunt up to King Stream. The yellow is the area in which we were studying, the area in which we were looking at do the conditions meet the code to have a, to have a residential parking permit program. So what are the code requirements? First off, you need a petition from the residents. You need 60% of the homes in that area to sign that petition. Second, you need to have 65% of the curbside spaces in the area occupied. Third, you need a total number of vehicles not registered in the neighborhood to be 25% or more. So those three requirements, and then there's also a caveat in there if the manager determines a safety issue that that could also trigger a study. So the results of the study, we sent out staff over multiple days and we looked at a 99 space area around that trail. And what we were finding is, although the code requirement is, well, first of all, let me back up. The resident petition we received was 91.6% of the residents in Old Drainsville Hunt signed the petition. That's houses, not, not individuals. Sometimes two per house, but we counted one per house. And Rob Nurschel, the HOA uh, president, did assure me that it was just because five people weren't home when he went to knock on the door. So, so he was certain that he would get those five if he were, were to go back. And I said, nope, 91% is enough. You, you check that box. Let's move on to the next thing. We went out and studied the 99 spaces over multiple days. We looked at the conditions at 7 a.m. when there were a handful of cars and 11 a.m when it was much more packed. And what we were finding is where the code requires 65% or more of the curbside spaces to be parked, we were finding between 70 and 73% of the curbside spaces in that 99 space area parked. We then went back and looked at the cars in that area where 25% need to be or more need to be outside of the neighborhood. We were finding between 63 and 66% were outside of the neighborhood. So obviously they have met the requirements under the code. Now here's the caveat. The largest expansion of the zone I can go and remain in the code while keeping that consistency is 110 spaces. That would drop those numbers of 70 and 73 down to 65 and then 60 to 66 would be still well above that. So we looked at a proposed zone of 110 spaces it is an imperfect solution. I'm reasonably certain that once we press it there, it will squeeze out. Staff is prepared to go out and re-examine the situation as it evolves and potentially come back to you for expansion of the zone once we establish it. Just letting you know, we are not, this isn't a, once it's done, we're checking the box. We will go back and revisit this. So the zone we're proposing is in yellow. It pretty much takes Huntsman Place out of play completely. 
it puts an area around Old Hunt Way, and I fully anticipate that we will see cars going up Old Hunt Way, and we'll be back looking at it. I'm proposing the zone to be Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 3.30, very similar to the Fairfax County zone that's up on Kingstream. And with that, I will take your questions. Thank you. Questions for the manager, Ms. Friedrichs. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, has anyone spoken with the uh, high school um, about this issue, and have they responded? I am glad you answered that. You asked that question. <laughs> I met with the principal, Dr. Noto, last Wednesday. Uh, we spoke at length about it. She is completely in support of the residential permit zone there. In fact, she will use this to encourage her students not. She, she didn't want her students parking there, and she was advising them not to park there without permission of the homeowners. Mm -hmm. And so this would help her. Get to that point she's also informed me that she intends to add additional parking in a grassy area out front by graveling it in as a temporary parking solution as they move forward and then once construction is complete returning it to grass and the open area that it is she doesn't want to pretend she doesn't want to pave it over in other words and kill what's there so we're looking at potential gravel lot out there to give additional parking which hopefully would also ease the situation uh, and, and she has already spoken to the students and asked them not to park she there, but they continue spoken to. to okay. As a matter of fact, she <laughs> and, she, she's told me that she has sent her security personnel on their little four-by uh, goat cart up the trail to take license plates to talk to students, but it is to no avail. They keep, they keep popping up. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Other questions for the town manager? Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, so this is a public hearing. Um, I would like to invite forward uh, the president of the Old Drainsville Hunt Club, HOA, um, to come forward if you would like to speak on this. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for your patience as we worked through this. No problem. Uh, I'm Rob Nershaw. I'm the president of the Old Drainsville Hunt Club and uh, also live at 654 Old Hunt Way. I just want to take a minute to uh, thank Mr. Ashton, uh, Mayor Merkel, and the town council for uh, their work on this. Um, truly, uh, I am appreciative of that, and I want you all to know that. Um, I'm aware that the town has gone to extraordinary measures to, number one, change the town parking ordinance in order to be able to address this issue. Um, number two, come out and do the study. Um, and I think the analysis that uh, Mr. Ashton has just given all of us is uh, dead on. Um, and uh, I guess uh, as the HOA president, the only thing I can add to Mr. Ashton's presentation is that I get a lot of the feedback from the neighbors. Uh, some of them are here tonight. Um, the speeding, the, uh, you know, the poor parking, the blocking mailboxes, the, the littering, the trash on the, the trail that goes up. Uh, there's been graffiti. There's even been reported, um, I guess, uh, smoking of uh, substance, illegal substances uh, um, and everything that goes with that. I've even had reports of kids speeding up the hills with people launched on the hoods of the cars and and I've had several neighbors say they've, they've had some close calls when they're going up the street and people are coming down the street um, quickly. So, so all, all of that goes with student drivers, and, and I understand that. Um, I, I guess the only other thing I'll add is, you know, these are not our neighbors, really. These are the high school kids. So, so all of a sudden the high school's uh, construction problem has become our problem. Um, so uh, with that, um, I think the only other thing that I can really add is that I think Mr. Ashton's already put his finger on what I view as the next problem, which is once we displace these 70 vehicles or 65 to 70, depending on the day, off of Huntsman Place and, and where they're currently parking, then they're just going to move their vehicles in the neighborhood. Um, Good news, bad news, I don't know. I, I think the, stair, the street narrows as you come up the hill, um, so that's going to create more of a con, you know, bottleneck or congestion point, which is potentially in some ways exaggerating the situation we have because that intersection of Huntsman and Old 
Hunt Way right now is probably a little wider set, section of the road, and there's also some common land in there um, where there are no homes, um, so we're not blocking any driveways there and things of that nature. But uh, so I just envision that uh, that this is a good first step, but I think we'll be probably back talking about this a little bit more. But again, I, I want to end on a positive. I want to thank all of you, and uh, we really do appreciate all your efforts on this. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, can I ask a question of the town manager? Would a new petition be required to address this, this possible secondary issue, or can we go from the current petition? I would view it as still operative. Okay. The same petition is being operative. So it shouldn't be an onerous, tough no, process? No, it, it would okay. be an observation, and I would begin the study once again. I also would like to probably let's talk about that stretch where it is um, along the side of the road where there are no homes, perhaps that is a candidate for some no parking signs to open that up con congestion wise as an interim. I can do that unilaterally under okay. my powers as town manager. That'd be so great. We could talk about that as well. Okay. okay. Just want to make so sure we're, you don't have to go through all this again if the, no, if the problem continues. I, I appreciate so. it. It's you. a lot going door to door as you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long street. Um, <laughs> um, so this is a public hearing. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to come forward and speak on this item? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Jack Hill, and I live at 716 Old Hunt Way. And if we could bring that picture back up. Sure. Um, I had a number of things I wanted to say, and I think most of them have been covered. Okay. But I live in the area that it's currently outside of the new restriction area, and I wanted to point one thing out, and that is uh, not all the students go this way. A number of the students, if you look right here, it's the bulb of the um, uh, Elm, uh, what, what is that neighborhood, um, Royal Elm Estates. And so there's lots of cut through right here. In fact, sometimes when they're parking here, it's actually quicker to come up, cut through yards, mm. into the cul-de-sac, and over that way. So what I was hoping, and I understand the, the uh, policies we're up against, I was hoping to see this moved a little bit farther up the road because, as we've said, these uh, people are going to move up the, ro mm. the road, and they're already cutting through here, and which is through people's yards and through into the cul-de-sac up there. So that's really all I had to say. And I did want to echo what um, Rob had said. I know that you're setting a precedent with this, this parking restriction in the town, and we do really appreciate that and uh, everything you've done for that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on this item? Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Tom Tomaccio. I'm... Um, also serving on the board is a, a secretary for the HOA. Um, I uh, live at 708 Huntsman Place in Herndon. Uh, we're at the epicenter of the Herndon High School parking situation uh, on Huntsman. Uh, it's been a bigger problem this year. Uh, we've noticed exponentially from, uh, from the previous year with the construction. So uh, increased vehicle traffic, safety issues. I don't want to beat the pro proverbial dead horse. Um, but I do want to thank the town for its proactive approach to the issue. And and to your positive engagement with the neighborhood. Uh, in particular, I want to thank Mr. Bill Ashton for, um, for the initial study and the plan for, for the legwork and coming out and, and, and doing, doing the, the hard work. Um, and then also a, a shout out to the uh, Herndon Police for their efforts um, in keeping an eye on the worst uh, parking offenders, um, and specifically Officer Mike Mern. Yeah, he's, he's been great. So um, I won't bore you with the details. I could tell you stories all day about the, the crazy stuff I've seen at, at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, um, But I do look forward to the approval of Mr. Ashton's plan and to the successful adoption of, of uh, a residential parking permit uh, uh, plan that works for all of us in the neighborhood going forward. So thanks again. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Yes, sir. Hello. My name is Mike Quinn. I'm at 707 Huntsman Place. And I want to thank the council and the mayor and Mr. Ashton also for all the work you've done, and we really appreciate it. And when we decided to do a petition, I was asked to cover Huntsman Place, which is in the center of this. And I decided, you know, this is going to be a good chance to find out if I'm just an angry old man <laughs> or does everyone else have a problem with this. And everyone on the street side, yes. And not just yes, but a very enthusiastic. Yes. So um, they'll be very appreciative of this if this goes through, and we want to thank you. I want to thank you very much. We appreciate it. 
Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on this item? Yes, ma'am. It's nice to see you guys. <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, my name is Melinda Dillon, and my husband and I live at 687 Old Hunter. Um, my understanding is that the proposal for this parking zone is going to end at 687, uh, I mean 689, and my house is 687, so I would be the starting point of the high school parking down on the further end, right in Right near the cul-de-sac. Yeah, right oh, there. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah, that would be me. My house faces <laughs> a little stretch of the woods. Thank you. Uh, the woods, and after that stretch of woods, the houses continue down to the road. Um, the cars are going to park along that stretch of the road and then continue all the way down. They're also going to enthusiastically park in front of my house. Um, we are a small neighborhood, and the roads are really aren't designed, in my opinion, to handle both sides of the road for parking and allow traffic to flow up and down the road. And once again, keep your eye on, I don't know how to work this, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> on the <laughs> press drive that's uh, uh, down there at the bottom. Um, quite honestly, um, I drive a F Nissan Frontier truck. How am I going to back out of my driveway when I'm going to have a wall of traffic on one end, a wall of traffic in front, and I'm trying to back my truck into the road? It's a tiny little road. It's not meant to go back and forth. Um, so it seems to me that the zone would extend to the stop sign on the corner of Old Hunt Way and Crest Drive, which is down at the end. That, to me, is a logical point, and maybe that's your stage two that you're thinking about. But you really are kind of stopping in the middle of the block. Um, there is that stop sign on the corner of Old Hunt Way and Crest Drive, and uh, my house would be only three houses away from the end of the block. In my opinion, the stop sign would be the natural stop point in the parking restrictions. Why stop before the block ends? Because if not, the cars are going to be turning off of Herndon Parkway onto Crest Drive and up to the road, three houses away from the stop sign. There's going to be a confusion when they come flying around Herndon Parkway onto Crest Road. There's going to be confusion as they stop and look, see, ooh, do I have a spot to the left? And maybe I'll go this way or maybe I'll go that way. Um, Personally, I don't even try to go to the top of the neighborhood because that's a madhouse in the morning. And um, so I always go to work out on Crest Drive. And as of today, here's a little bit of my morning to go out to Crest Drive to Herndon Parkway to go to work. I dodge the walkers crossing the road, looking down at their cell phones, trying to get to school. I have a little skateboarder slash bike rider, and he's hilarious. He likes to take selfies of himself <laughs> while riding in the middle of the road, looking in the opposite direction, going this way, and taking his selfie. And I've literally had to stop my car in the middle of the road, blow the horn, and then he looks up and goes, oh, yeah. And so I'm always dodging the cars coming flying around. Um, there is this one dark green van that comes off of Herndon Parkway when I go to work. And it's full of high school girls, and they're chitter-chattering, and they're looking at their phones, and then they look at me, and then they kind of skitter off. So anyhow, I, I thank you very much for letting us speak to you. And please consider stopping um, uh, not just stopping at 689 Old Hunt Way, but to consider going at least all the way down to the stop sign. Um, and I believe it would be a more logical choice. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on this item? Okay. I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Ms. Olam. Madam Mayor, I move approval of 17-0-20. Okay, we have a motion to approve made by Ms. Olam, seconded by Ms. Cunningham. Uh, discussion on the motion. I feel your pain. Both of my sons graduated from Herndon High in 2002 and 10. I know quite a few of your neighbors. 
as well as the people that live in Kingstream. I think they were really smart to finally do something, and uh, I'm happy to support this. But if you've got people cutting through your yard, because I was having that, I'm not by the high school like you are, but there's a middle school close by, and all of a sudden it got to the point where the grass wasn't growing in my yard. So mm -hmm. call me up, I'll tell you what I've done, and all of a sudden it's not happening anymore. But uh, if they're going through your yards, that's trespassing. I, I put signs up and so forth, talk to the children that live there that I know, but the rest of them, it's disheartening at one, two o'clock in the morning to have people going through your yard or speeding around. So um, I wish you all the best. I hope this works, but if it pushes it out, we'll be back on it. And I know um, our town manager will be right there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who was uh, Ms. Cunningham? Echoing Councilmember Owen's remarks, I really thank you for taking advantage of the new um, policies we've put in place, and hopefully this will work. As uh, keep us posted. If it doesn't, if you see continue to see parking creep, um, you know, protecting the streets and safety of our residential neighborhoods is a prime concern of your town council. Um, and I, this is going to enhance safety for not just the residents, but also for the students. It's not safe for them to be parking there and biking, walking, skating willy-nilly through the, the streets in the neighborhood. So hopefully this will improve um, access and safety and um, get folks focused on the right things in the right time. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. McKenna. Yeah, I think this is a very good first step. I want to thank staff and everyone that uh, got involved uh, in the community to uh, do this. I can tell you that uh, from previous experience as well, things like this can help change behavior of people. Um, unintended consequences is that Right now you see, if, you know, a person sees X amount of space open, they're going to think everything is closed. So, um, you know, there's situations that, it, it, you know, right now, if you look at it on an academic sense, yes, I can understand the situation. But in practicality and how it might play out is that they're going to see that, you know, the difference between two or three houses, they're not going to really, you know, see that. And they're just going to be frustrated and go someplace else or... Um, the high school situation with the gravel will definitely be, I think, will help as well. So I do think that there's a combination of things that will work. And the good thing is if there is a situation where this does arise, we can come back and fix it. So uh, very good job on this, and I'm, I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, I do have some comments, but before I do that, I, can I ask um, Mr. Ashton for just a point of clarification on the last woman's comments? I think one of the things I'd asked about at the work session last week, because as we all looked at the map, it doesn't cover the entire neighborhood, and I know there was a great explanation for why, and we even talked about whether we could do one side of the street for the entire neighborhood to, to compensate for that, but will you just clarify that for us, and then I'm going to give some comments. The, the point I was making is, based on the studies of the conditions out there, the furthest we can go out and still meet all the requirements under the code was 110 spaces. So when we looked at how to do that, we looked at various options, knowing that if we only went 110, it was going to push somewhere else. I, I fully anticipated that. So what I was trying to do is take Huntsman completely out of play. So instead of pushing it in three directions, we'd push it in two, which would give us more of an opportunity to come back and revisit expanding those, those two sections. But, you know, we looked at going down to the corner, but we couldn't, the counts, the traffic counts that I got out of DPW of how many spaces we can park in engineer, from an engineering study were putting us over the 110 to get there. So we, we kind of closed it up a little bit and met the requirement with fully anticipating that I guarantee you the day after those signs go up and we're starting to enforce, I'm having staff go back out and see where the behavior's changed. And we'll come back to council if we need to, and we'll get that rectified. Great, thank you for that clarification. Um, so I just wanna say, um, you know, as a, when I was a high schooler, I, just, I want to speak on behalf of the high schoolers for just two seconds because I was a, I lived two miles from my high school and I was a walker as well. And then, you know, it was always great when you got to have a ride or, or do that. So I get that. And I know some of my neighborhood kids um, that, where I live near, they drive to the high school um, and they have talked about all the different neighborhoods. So I, I certainly understand that high school kids don't want to take the bus and they prefer to drive and, and use these neighborhoods. So I get that. At the same time, it's a huge impact to, to our residents, right? It's certainly a huge safety concern. That's obviously a much bigger priority than having a convenient potential option for high schoolers. 
um, to be able to park a little closer as opposed to taking the bus or walking. Um, so I, I certainly see both sides and obviously have to side with public safety, with making sure that we're supporting our residents and, and our streets are safe and certainly that fire trucks are able to get down our streets, et cetera. So that's, um, of course, going to be the priority. Thanks. Thank you. Other comments? Well, I'm glad that we are able to do that. And I am sorry that it took us a while to amend our, our, our code so that we were able to implement something like this. It's not an unusual thing to do. I know all around Fairfax High School in Fairfax City, they have the same issue and they have a, a program in place. The county has um, different rules on their books, so they were able to put it in place in King Street. So uh, I am... I want to thank the town manager for really being proactive, going out there, working with the residents, and going out there himself to check out the situation. And I know that um, we will swiftly correct the what's going to happen. I know, and I'm going to come park over there and watch for that selfie kid on the skateboard. <laughs> if I know him, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> Scary. I also do want to um, give a shout out to HPD and to um, the staff at Hernan High School. They're not here, but I know that there's a lot of communication there. Um, the police department and the town manager and I have met with Fairfax County Schools and the construction team and everybody. We've been talking about this for well over a year. And um, how soon are these signs going to go up? They are on order. We, okay. I took the uh, initiative to initiate ordering the signs and the, and the placards or decals. Uh, last week okay. and I think there's still a few week lead to when they arrive we'll be reaching out contacting the neighbors making sure all the affected residents come in get their get their stickers get their visitors passes and we'll get all those vehicles okay. taken care of and uh, so it'll be in the coming weeks great sorry I'm all out of order asking questions when I shouldn't be sorry madam town attorney <laughs> we just want to make sure we've got all the answers here so uh, with that, I'll call Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. And that motion carries, and we look forward to helping solve this problem. Thank you. Um, we have one final, um, well, one general item, which is a resolution 17G77 to accept the state of the town report for fiscal year 2017. I'll call on the town manager for the state of the town. Thank How's you, it going Matt. out there? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, as, as you all know, pursuant to the charter, I have to uh, quote, prepare in suitable form for publication and submit to the town council at a regular meeting in September each year a concise, comprehensive report of the financial transactions and administrative activities of town government during the immediately preceding fiscal year. Quote, and I've placed at your seats on the dais that report uh, that you should have received. It is also loaded in Granicus. And it will be published to the town's website tomorrow. But tonight, I wanted to provide to you a few highlights and a, and, and a surprise that I want to unveil for the uh, for the citizens of the town. Um, the objectives of the preceding year have focused on advancing the 2035 vision. Town staff has worked very hard to advance us closer to that vision. In 2017, we saw straight, great strides in the downtown. As I mentioned earlier, we made public the proposed comprehensive agreement. During FY 2017, much of the groundwork for that agreement was laid. Comstock was selected as the RFP respondent, so as we could begin negotiations. And your, your negotiating uh, objectives were received by staff and implemented during those negotiations. The framework of the agreement also pretty much occurred in FY 2017, which resulted in the document that we released yesterday. That wasn't the only thing in the downtown we, we took care of. We replaced a water main along Eldon Street. We completed duck banks to facilitate future utility undergrounding. We saw the completion of the Herndon Fire Station and phase one of Junction Square also in the last fiscal year. Down in Metro, we prepared, we've been preparing for Metro's arrival in FY 2017. The town continued to plan several vehicle and pedestrian improvements. And we sought funding, uh, grant funding to accomplish these needed infrastructure upgrades. Staff also conducted significant analysis on the future water and sewer utilizations we also discussed tonight, so as to begin the fiscal planning for these infrastructure improvements. As I mentioned at the outset, one of the elements of this annual report are the financial elements. Um, in FY 2017, the town did receive GFOA awards for budgeting and financial reporting. And during FY 17, I can assure you all financial policies set forth by council were adopted or observed by staff. At the end of FY 2017, we also been able to increase our general fund, undesignated fund balance to approximately $9.2 million, which accounts for 26% of our general fund budget. 
Additionally, we were able to deliver to you an FY 2018 proposed budget that kept all tax rates at their current levels while providing the capital flexibility necessary to achieve the council's objectives to include the redevelopment of the downtown. But that being said, staff also realizes in order to make many of these things happen, we have to focus externally and seek grant funding. We received over 27 million in grant funding for transportation projects. These include the East Eldon Street project, East Spring Street and Van Buren Street. Each of these projects will not only focus on vehicle, but also pedestrian and bicycles to move us closer to your multimodal transportation model that is that your vision demands. In addition, we received $125,000 from Fairfax County to help fund the turf field at Breedy Park. We received a $280,000 matching grant from the state for milling and paving. And we also, and that's in addition to the normal public safety grants we get and the other smaller grants for miscellaneous projects here and there. So it again was an aggressive year from that, from that perspective. This also was the 40th anniversary of the HPD citizen support team. The citizen support team, for those that don't know, are an invaluable part of our Herndon Police family. They provide uh, traffic direction. Uh, I, I, roll, I rolled out to a water main break on Herndon Parkway a few months ago at 10 o'clock at night, and citizen support team staff were out there freeing up officers to remain on patrol while they directed the traffic. Again, it's an invaluable part of the fabric of, that, of our HPD community, and we congratulate them on their 40, our, on their 40th anniversary. HPD also completed its upgrade to new in-car camera system, conducted a successful body cam pilot, which in early FY 2018 was implemented, but we'll talk about that next year. A new 911 system was integrated with integrated mapping and GPS location for wireless callers was also implemented during this last fiscal year. The town continued its wide array of recreation programs with more than 50 adult programs in performing arts, environment, sports, and arts and crafts off each Quarter. This is in addition to the myriad of children's programs that the Parks and Rec Department puts on every day. We saw 81,500 people attend the Herndon Festival. We saw 5,000 people attend the 4th of July and 2,000 people attend Labor Day. These events engage our community. They bring people into the community and creates a vibrancy that enhances the quality of life for the town of Herndon. Out at the golf course, Gene's entrepreneurial approach through engagement social Social media and on-demand marketing has really started filling up his tea sheet. But that being said, he focuses on more than just golf. And last year, he retained his designation as a certified Audubon sanctuary, and he lived up to the mayor's monarch pledge with a new butterfly way station as you drive onto the property. Other areas of technology achieved last year in the town's automated meter reading program, we saw 6,000 meters replaced. We also are now up to using 3,000 refuse and 2,000 recycling containers in our automated refuse and re recycling uh, program. In the spirit of community spirit, historical markers were added throughout the town in FY 2017 with more slated for this fiscal year well. These items and many, many more were accomplished last year. And this was done in spite of significant leadership change at the staff level in town. With the retirements of Art Anseline, 40 years, 10 in this chair. With, with my 20 years in IT, transitioning to this chair. Mary Tui's 20 years, or I'm over 20, it's like 22 years, at the helm of the finance department. And the retirement early in FY 2018 of Bob Boxer, 14 years. This meant a critical loss of knowledge and expertise on the management team. And if you add on top of it, we also lost our deputy director for public works responsible for shop operations who resigned earlier in the, in the fiscal year. But with the addition of Jenny Tripoli in finance, Tammy Chastain as the deputy director of DPW, the promotion of Dana Singer to DPW director, and two weeks from today, Paige Kalapazev will start as your new IT director. These professionals will create a promise of a bright future for the leadership of this town. I'm very uh, thrilled to be serving with them in the years to come. So as I kind of outlined here a few minutes ago, we have a good story to tell, and we need to let our citizens and taxpayers know how their money is being spent. And in order to ensure that our citizens receive this report, staff has made some changes this year that we have not done before. Instead of producing an executive summary that gets posted to the website and we have some published copies laying around and can be requests them, 
This year we're planning to send to each home in Herndon this color brochure outlining the fine work staff has performed on their behalf last year. I hope everyone in this town has an opportunity to read it as I'm very proud of the accomplishments of this great team and they are outlined herein. At this point, I want to thank a few people that were instrumental in the great work that staff performed last year. First off, our Danceling for his efforts to achieve many of these things in the first half of FY 2017 and leaving us with a framework to see the rest of these accomplishments through to their completion. I also wish to thank the, manage the members of the management team for their hard work and leadership to achieve everything that we were able to get accomplished. I also want to thank the fine staff of the town without whom nothing, I do say nothing, would get done. They do the heavy lifting each day. I'm proud to call them my colleagues, and I'm honored to lead them, and I thank them particularly for their fine work. And Madam Mayor and members of the town council, I thank you for the clarity and vision and the support you give staff each day to help us meet our mission. We thank you for those things. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Wow. Questions or comments for... For Bill? Yeah, okay. Yes, ma'am. Sure, I'll give just brief comments. Um, thank you for this report. Um, what I love about this, certainly in, I, I like to get things done, as you guys know, I don't like wasting time and I like getting things done, but that requires a balance of also setting a vision and setting a plan and setting goals, right? Because if you don't know what you're driving towards or what you're gonna execute on, it doesn't matter. So I love that with the collaboration of the council and the staff, I think we've really set a great vision for the short term, for the long term, and we continue and to make sure those, those plans and those goals are accountable, right? And so I think that really, sets the tone um, and there is just a lot going on not only in arts and all the fun stuff we talk about and I you know we love sharing those events but certainly with the mission of government and the mission of town services and the things that really are what we're responsible for and what staff is responsible for so I think this is a great reflection of that um, and I, I appreciate that can I borrow this a second I also want to comment on this new document that that Bill and Ann Curtis are um, uh, community um, public affairs officer has spearheaded. So my day job, I work for a company, we, we focus on visualization and the way people consume information. Um, this is a great representation of the way people consume information. I'm sure there are folks, including the council and other folks that are gonna read the entire document and they're gonna, re you know, it's great to have all the details, but for most of our citizens, this is gonna be a really great way to consume and get the highlights and focus on what, what we're accomplishing, what we're working on, what your town government, um, and to make sure it aligns with the vision and the, and the goals and, and what you want us to be doing. And if not, come, you know, contact us. So kudos on, on creating a document that, is easily consumable. People get a lot of information thrown at them. I, I'm really, really impressed with, with this new way to communicate with our citizens. So thank you for that as well. Thanks. Other comments uh, or questions? Yep. Are we asked? I just want to briefly echo um, Vice Mayor Baker's statements. It's uh, really important to communicate briefly and thoroughly what we have, and you've done both. So um, the, the accomplishments of the town staff are, are um, undeniable and very praiseworthy, and I thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Well, since no one's asking questions, Madam Mayor, I, I would like to move that we accept 17G-77. I'll second. I and just looked at the town attorney and went, sorry. <laughs> We're just so excited about this, this uh, state of the town. So there's a motion to accept it made by Ms. Olam, seconded by Mr. McKenna. Comments, Ms. Olam. Thank you. <laughs> I was sitting here so quietly because I know the town attorney will take me out to the woodshed if I make comments and not ask questions. So She's so mean. She looks so nice. but <laughs> So one of my favorite things is when you open this up, uh, myself, Lisa, and Grace all got on the council in 2010. And we started the bowl ball rolling on that new fire station. That's something that you can really see. Now, when you talk about the duck banks and the new water pipes and so <laughs> forth, everybody forgets they were upset about the traffic jams, but you know, now it's all hidden again. But this fire station, we had the smallest inept and oldest uh, fire department in the entire county. We had been ready to rock and roll. 
and we finally got a council that would move forward and work with the county. So it took a while after you have to go jump through all the hoops, but I'm also very excited. Uh, this is a great piece that you put out so that people can visually see these things. But that fire department, I'm just so excited that we've, you know, it took us seven years from mm -hmm. start to fin finish, but it's it's really a um, a great addition. And now we have the latest, greatest equipment here in Herndon. We don't have to be second class with um, the ambulances and the fire trucks that we have, as well as everything else. Thank you. Thank you. Other uh, comments on the motion, Mr. McKenna? Uh, I, I really want to thank staff and, and Mr. Ashton uh, when we had our little retreat in regards to, you know, what we wanted as a vision in regards to, um, you know, one of the things that I certainly ran on and everybody else did was to have transparency in government and uh, to make it more open and friendly. And I think this is a very um, digestible document that makes it easier to look at things and uh, makes government more approachable. And I think that's one of the things we certainly strive for. And um, it's a blessing to have this. And thank you very much for your work on that. Thank you. Other comments? Anyone? Uh, well, I'm really glad that Sheila and Jen unfolded that to show you guys because last week, uh, the day of our uh, work session, the town manager was skipping around going, I've got a surprise for you, you're gonna love it. And he was right. Um, it is it is very exciting to, to have a document that people might actually read. I mean, you should have seen him skipping around, it was really fun. <laughs> is that why you're laughing? Yeah, okay. I ask you, I skip, yeah. He does. Um, but no, this is, this is really exciting. Um, I think that it may actually inspire a few people to want to read the real document and see what's going on out there. Um, it should be hitting mailboxes later this week, so um, thank you for, um, for making that happen and for Ann Curtis for her work um, to bring it from your vision to bring it to life. Um, I'd like to see us, um, whenever it makes sense to do more things like this, because uh, like Mr. McKenna said, you know, we want, you know, we're a small town. We're trying desperately to hold on to being a small town and being approachable and having information and communicating with our residents is really important. And so I can't wait to hear the feedback from them. Maybe pe more people will read this than my newsletter in the water bill every month. That won't be a, that's a, that's sort of a low goal, but we're excited. So thank you for, um, for doing that. And I look forward to uh, hearing more from you guys. Like, like the vice mayor said, if, if this, um, what you're reading in this uh, brochure is not what you hope we're doing, let us know because we're, we're here to listen. So with that, I will call the question on Ms. Olam's motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. Uh, that brings us to the consent agenda, which is item number 10. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion carries. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And we stand, um, we stand adjourned at 8.26 p.m. Thank you very much. <laughs>